When I'm researching a new standard to do with industrial network communication, I like to dive in and immerse myself into all of the details of the standard. After that, I try to see what I can build with it. After all, my goal is not to write a white paper about it, but rather to use it practically to solve problems. Now, OPC UA poses a challenge in this regard. The specification is enormous and there are a lot of options and quite a bit of it is not implemented in any real world practical software application, so it's a little tricky. So in learning OPC UA, I've decided to modify my approach a bit, do it differently, and I want to do it by asking a question, and this is the question here. What is it that I need to know about OPC UA to use it in building practical, real-world, commercial automation applications? So I want to understand the theory and the parts of the spec insofar that it'll allow me to use OPC UA to software to build systems, as opposed to just writing a white paper on it. So I'm going to start this process in this video and continue posting more videos over the next couple of weeks to answer my question. I'm going to be learning about OPC UA by creating these videos on it. Please feel free to comment on the videos, add your knowledge as it would help me in my overall understanding of OPC UA. Now as I publish more videos in this series, I'll be placing them into a playlist on YouTube. The playlist link is up top in the text part there so you can bookmark it if you like so you don't miss a video, right? Alright, so let me get into it. I want to show you where I'm at so far. So I've decided what aspects to look at and what helped me was actually this book. Hope you can see it right here by John Rinaldi, OPC UA. Uh, Walker Reynolds refers to it as the blue book. Um, I know even though it was published in 2016, bit dated but still very relevant. I was able to get my bearings by looking at actually just the four, first four chapters. I mean the entire book is good but the first four chapters especially helped me. Alright, so let me show you what I've come up with so far. Alright, so what I decided to do was to use OPC or Classic OPC as a jumping off point. Now this is the overall structure of Classic OPC, right? There's some device or equipment, there's an OPC server talking some sort of native protocol or it could be an open protocol to the device or devices and then we have the OPC client which is usually HMI or SCADA software. I mean nine times out of ten that's what it was, right? It didn't have to be but that's what it was. And then there's OPC over COM or DCOM which is a Windows technology. And of course the client and server would both run on a Windows platform. So this was a basic, you know, classic OPC um, basic configuration. Now in the implementations of OPC you have seen thus far Practically, um, this hasn't changed. It's the same structure. There's now an OPC UA server and an OPC UA client. The OPC UA server uh, might be doing some diff slightly different things, but it could still talk these various protocols to all the de various devices on the market, right? So here are the aspects, the jumping off point with, which with the different aspects I want to explore in moving from classic OPC to OPC UA. <clears throat> All right, the first is these two now, the client and the server, are not limited to Windows again. They are supposed to be cross-platform. You're supposed to be able to implement OPC UA on lots of different platforms, you know, Linux and Raspberry Pi and all that. I haven't seen an implementation for low power and restrained, sorry, constrained devices like Arduino. If anybody knows about an Arduino implementation for OPC UA, please post it in the comments below. I've been looking for one. Um, so that's the first aspect. What does this mean um, to, to the industry? What has been happening? Who has implemented it in their devices? Who has not? That sort of thing. Um, and then the other aspect is that this COM has been replaced by TCP IP. Now there's um, uh, TCP binary and HTTP and HTTP XML and all that stuff, right? But under the hood is still TCP IP. So there's the client and the server will now communicate not with COM, DCOM, but TCP IP. That's an as aspect to be investigated again. How does that work? Then there's a bunch of network security stuff, which is good. Because an OPC client to OPC server, once you knew where the OPC server was and could, uh, could browse it, you could connect it and wreak havoc, right? So it's good to have a secure connection between these two. So there's all kinds of things. There's network 
sorry, there's user authentication, authorization, certificates, encryption. Need to know about that stuff practically, right? That's the third aspect. Then there's a data model. Now, in OPC UA, they call it an information model. Walker Reynolds re refers to it, uh, Walker Reynolds of 4.0 Solutions. If you're not subscribed to 4.0 Solutions, you are missing out on a big part of your life. Please do. Um, he refers to it as a data model, and I agree with him. Having a programming background, the big deal that they make about the data model in OPC UA programming has been doing it for years and years, right? JSON and just, just data structures. Um, there are protocols that do this as well, BACnet, IEC, 61850, all that sort of thing. But of course, OPC UA is doing it differently. Um, and so what does this data model mean for practical real world implementations? And then the fifth area, which piggybacks off of the data model is companion specifications. So it's going to be more and more companion specifications. So these five aspects or areas is from what I've seen so far, what I will be exploring on a practical level. So I'm looking to get into the theory of these various aspects towards practical implementation in software. That's how I want to learn about it. It has to be practical. All right, so that's the plan. As I said, I'll be publishing more videos. Please feel free to comment and join me on this journey. And let's learn about OPC UA together if you don't know it already. Thanks.